That's a lot of games. Uh, we just got from back from Gen Con. Just one or two. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it doesn't matter. Doesn't the mountain doesn't matter? No. Mm-hmm. This was our Gen Con haul of 2023, and so we're just gonna kind of briefly catch you up on how our Gen Con went, and talk very briefly, rapid fire about the games that you just seen us push rapid the fire. mountains over to the side. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I guess one thing to note, Lorcana was a big release of Gen Con of 2023. It was a huge release. Those are some of the longest lines I've seen. They actually let people line up uh, starting day to 6 p.m. the night before so that they were ready to pick it up by 10 a.m. If you're not familiar, Lorcana is a game by Ravensburger. Mm-hmm. It's a trading card game, but it's using Disney characters. Yeah, so somewhat in the vein of... I mean, it, it breaches a few games where we've looked into a little bit of Magic, a little bit of uh, the World of Warcraft card game, for those that remember it. Uh, a little bit of Pokemon, almost, uh, mm-hmm. from the sound, too, but yeah. in all utterly different. Yeah. So if you're looking for Lurkana information, I would suggest checking out other people's videos. Mm-hmm. Dice Tower has a good one that Tom had done before it happened. I'm certain yeah. there'll be even more over time goes on. Oh, yeah. Not necessarily a game we're for sure about. We're going to hunt down because we don't usually do too many trading card games. No. Uh, we are curious, so we might give it an attempt sometime. And if we do, we'll show you guys the game and tell you what we think. Yes. Yeah. But... Uh, I think without further ado, maybe we'll just do this rapid fire showing you what we got. <laughs> All right. All right. Do you want to start it? Or you sure. Want to start? So I'm starting out with Perplexed uh, Pack O Game. Um, so, what this is, if you're not familiar, there is eight games that's in here, and they are the size of a pack of gum. Um, so, this, we have eight of them. We already had eight previously, and they have set three coming out that you can pre order by Perplex. These are great to throw in your bag when you're at a, you know, a restaurant or something, and you're just sitting around waiting for your food or wherever. These do not take up much room in this bag nor on the table. So, Perplex Games, Perplex Games, Heckle Games. One little side note I want to make on that uh-huh. is if you buy the 8-pack, so if this is something that interests you, they actually include the yeah. packaging on this too. So. It's not like you gotta buy this no, that's in the game. Correct. It's like, no. So it makes it great, like you said, for tossing in your backpack or whatnot. Exactly. Yep. All right, Jacob, grab one. All right, so I'm just gonna go down the list. Uh, one of the first ones here I'm gonna talk about is Halloween Party. This is by Trick, Trick or Treat Studios. And basic premise, it, it's a party. It's a Halloween party. Do you, who are you keeping in? Who are you saying, you know, we, we got everybody here we need. You know, and so as you do that, you have things that'll happen in the game, modifiers to your points, and then it's whoever has the most happening party at the end. There you go. And also by Trick and Treats is, uh, what was this one? Oh, this one's called Trick and Treats, but it's by Trick or Treats. <laughs> uh, we played this one a few times, basically. Uh, you have a bunch of candy baskets, and yours is secret, and you're trying to get the most candy in yours, but not let other people know. Because they guess you, you get out, you lose the game. Quick little game, doesn't take up much room in your box, in your bag, and much room in your table. Uh, great little game. Mm-hmm. Then we've got Beacon Patrol here by Pandasaurus. Uh, this one, you it's a co-op, you're all working together to basically map out this channel and coastline. And uh, as you're laying the tiles, I'll say it reminds me a little bit of Carcassonne, uh, but completely different the way the scoring is and the fact that you're all working together and you know you get to you get to pilot little boats or there you go and this is a game that was kind of i mean almost all games dude like, dude there's just a bunch of you know little like um oh you know you don't really hesitate you just kind of grab the game impulse that's the word i'm looking for dude we actually played it last night for the first time. Basically, it's a game that you say dude in many different ways, and you're trying to get other people who are saying it the same way to recognize that you're saying it the same way, and if you are, you say sweet, and then that card that had the way it was spelled is how you determine, you know, how many points you have. Uh, little fun, little party game, up to six players. Dude. Sweet. Let's see, we would have a <coughs> number drop here. This is a roll and write version of Tetris. 
and that is the easiest way to describe it. Uh, you go around, you put in the numbers, you put in the shapes, you try to get the best score possible without having the dreaded, uh, dreaded pieces drop extra on your turn. Mm -hmm. And then um, we love Sherlock Files uh, by Indie Card and Games. We've already done three boxes, I think, or maybe we're, we're almost on done. One third. We're on our third box. We've got, like, I think, one or two cases to mm -hmm. solve. It's so great. We'll play it, and uh, basically you're Sherlock Holmes. Well, you're trying to beat Sherlock Holmes is what you're trying to do. But you're working together, playing cards, super simple mechanically, but trying to figure out the mystery is where really the game is really played. And then that's like at least half, if not two-thirds of your game, is going to be just kind of discussing those cards. Mm -hmm. um, so we love it so much, we want to keep buying all these boxes. This one comes with, it looks like, four more scenarios. Uh, or maybe three, three more scenarios. One Sorry, one was long. Three yeah. more scenarios um, that we can add to our collection. Looking forward to getting this to the table. Oh, yes. Now we've got <coughs> Beer and Bread. This one is a two player game when you're competing villages, basically trying to make the best beer recipes, the best bread recipes, and get to be the most famous during it. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe there's also like you're trying to work through famine and all too so there's going to be resource collection and all that and it's just i mean come on bigger bread what can you how can you go wrong there you go so next up we have roman a day by alley cat uh we actually had the good fortune to play this uh back in april uh we mentioned in about us that jacob's cousin joey works mm -hmm. with dice tower so we were hanging out at dice tower studios uh it was actually chris e that showed us the game um so we played it together and it was just a lot of fun. Um, it's, it's a super fast game to, to get to the table. It's not very difficult mechanically. It's just the strategy is where really the bulk of it is. Uh, but yeah, nice game. Check it out. Now what we call kind of a dangerous game. <clears throat> this one is by AG Waffle Time. The reason it's dangerous is because by the end of the game, you're going to be sitting there desiring waffles. True. Sure. But in it, you are creating these masterpieces of waffles, putting on bananas and whipped cream, and if you're lucky enough, butter, and then syrup, and on top of everything, and then seeing who has the most fancy, I would say, of waffle. <laughs> there you go. So we love Keep the Heroes Out. This is an expansion for Keep the Heroes Out called Guild Masters Revenge. Um, this creates the mechanic of one versus many that, that somebody gets to play as a guild master. Um, this does actually increase the number of players you can play in guild and uh, keep the heroes out. It's only four players. Um, this allows basically three more players because of having a guild master at that point. So then you can have up to seven players playing keep the heroes out. So I'm curious to see how this changes the game because keep the heroes out is fantastic oh, yes. as it sits. On a side note, you should have seen how excited she was when she saw that one there. Yeah, that was Giddy. <laughs> Giddy is a school girl. <laughs> Next, we have Tribes of the Wind uh, by Hatchet. Oh, Hatchet. 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 I, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, um, but we're just going to say Hatchet. <clears throat> in this, it takes place in the future. Uh, pollution's gotten bad. We've had to go to the trees and basically become wind riders. Mm -hmm. So in this, you are trying to work on your tableau, building villages and temples and everything and clearing out the pollution as best as possible. Mm -hmm. But one of the interesting mechanics in it is the way the cards work. Mm -hmm. Because the cards, you have what you see, and then you have the backs of everyone else's, which, you know, I mean, that sounds like, well, that's every game. Except the back of everyone else's cards matter towards what you want to do. So as an example, you may have a card that says if there's three fire icons between all the hands, or the hands of your neighbors, you can do this ability. If there's five, you can do a better, bigger one. And so that's kind of how it works. Yeah. So this one's not a new game. Um, so let me see if I pronounce it right. Sagrada. Ooh, that's good. Um, but basically, it is a rolling um, dice, drafting dice, creating a window. 
Uh, it's a game that we hadn't had a chance to play yet. We did do the game library for two different days at the convention. And this was one game that we tried at the game library. And we really liked it, thus why we bought it. So it's a nice casual game. Um, a lot of people can kind of get into. So yeah, check it out. It's been on for a while. So if you're like us and you haven't played it yet, try it. Oh, and now Express Route by the OP. Uh, this one is a cooperative game. You're working with trains. Uh, yeah, you're basically trying. So yeah, it's a kind of a pick up and deliver, yep. but you're all working together to pick up and set deliver. Yep, you're trying to help with customer demand, but you mm -hmm. need to work together, which is kind of unusual in these type of games. So that's I thought that was a really fresh breath of air. Obviously, in strand wrap. <laughs> we'll try that one and see what, what we think and let you guys know too. Don't eat the box. No. Oh. Now this is again another game that's been out for a while, uh, Everdale. Um, Everdale is, man, it's a great game. It's a it's a worker placement game. The the tree that they have in it, uh, the Ever Tree, is beautiful and stands up on the board. It has great game presence. This is the collector's edition. We actually tried the collector's edition at the game library. Um, and I just love to see every single piece of art, but all the way the cards work together for your village and helping you like collect, um, they didn't call them points, but um, I forget what the term was, but basically victory points to determine who's the winner. Uh, this was this is a beautiful game and it was really nice and they had a nice con special that we got this cheaper than what it would cost for retail. Right. But, and all it cost us was a selfie. A selfie. And they also had a discount on top of that too. Well, they are. So, I mean, come on. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Everdale, if you haven't played it already, um, don't do like us. Play it now and then you'll probably want to buy it. <laughs> I would say pause the video, go play it, but yeah, just keep watching. Alright, next is a fairly hefty one. Jerusalem, Anno Domini. And this is by DeVere. Uh, in this game, you play as basically followers of Jesus trying to get closer to him at the Last Supper. You know, it's a bit of a competitive nature. You're trying to see who's the best among you, but, uh, and also, you know, trying to stay as far away from Judas as possible. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a little bad news there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And so, uh, we did get another game from Trick or Treat Games, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Wow. And so with this one, so many times when you have these like classic games like Letters from Whitechapel does this, Fury of Dracula does this, uh, I haven't played Last Friday but I heard that Last Friday does this too where it's like one versus many. But this is kind of a unique one in the sense that like you're working together against Leatherface, not trying to die by Leatherface. So I thought that was a really good one and this one was a Gen Con release so I was really happy to go pick that up on the first day of the con. But uh, looking forward to this guy. And then we've got Tiny Towns. So in this, you're working on, well, basically building your towns. Uh, you, you, it's resource management, building construction, just by the time you have your own, by the time you end the game, you have your own little city. And then victory points are based on certain cards and certain layouts. So yeah. we haven't had a chance to play it yet, but it looks fun. And the reason why we have Tiny Towns, actually, uh, is because we did the AEG Big Game Night mm -hmm. in Tiny Towns, Waffle Time, and Number Drop yep. were the three games that we got that evening. Uh, Tiny Towns was the only one that we didn't play out of those games that we got, so we're curious to see this one. This one's been out for a while, but we'll try it and see what we think about it. Oh, I'll give you this one, Jacob. Oh. Since we have two more left. We do have two more left. Yeah. Oh, man, if I can get a hold of this one. Let me help. Let me help. Thank you. Yeah, this is a big box here. Uh, Tokyo Sidekick. This is by Japanime Games. Uh, spoiler alert, so is Sushi Book. <laughs> Spoilers! But anyways, uh, we got to talk to actually one of the guys at the booth at Japanime for a while, and he said this is like pandemic in the sense that you're working together against like these different forces of evil and you know bad guys and stuff um but unlike in pandemic you actually get to level up in this one uh and then it's still one of those kind of like pandemic in the sense of it's really tough to win so i'm very excited to try tokyo sidekick out and see what happens so as the previous spoiler stated we have another game by japanime 
and another little spoiler on this one uh, it's another one that'll make you hungry yeah especially if you like sushi yeah so this is sushi boat and in this one you play as well basically people going to a sushi restaurant and you mm -hmm. have uh, some of the staff that's there that can help you and all this stuff and all the sushi moves along a conveyor belt system which by the way the components in this are really top-notch mm -hmm. uh, the, the actual conveyor belt section I mean it's not a belt per se but because you can just push everything and slide it around but most everything in it is either wooden or it's these plastic little discs that look like sushi mm -hmm. and then the way the points work in the game it's based on how much you've eaten and the color of plates so if you have like a stack of you know five red plates that's more points than just having a red then a blue then a yellow then a red and then also the different variety of sushi because come on there's so much fun in the variety yeah, absolutely it is the spice of life there you go <laughs> Now, one thing that's not at all game related as far as purchasing games is Stack Up. Now, I have this little dinosaur, but that was because we donated to Stack Up. Um, Stack Up was a new organization that was new to us mm -hmm. as far as we've never heard about them before. Um, but if you're curious, go to stackup.org. Uh, what they do is they help veterans mm -hmm. by getting them with gaming, you know, whether it be tabletop gaming or video mm -hmm. gaming. Yeah. You know, because the, the troops go through a lot, and a lot of times this is a really great therapeutic way for them to kind of get, mm -hmm. you know, get a break from what's happened to them or whatever. And so it's a nonprofit organization that's just helping the vets out. So if you want to help them out or learn more about them, again, stackup.org. And that's how I got this T Rex. <laughs> T-Rex in a shirt who by the way that T-Rex uh, went through quite a bit of the con with us with his head sticking out of the bag and then his uh, his little arms sitting there on the side so about any time anyone saw him they kind of stopped us and wanted to know where we got it so <laughs> he's cute yeah um so there's lots of games here we're looking forward to cracking a lot of them open and playing them and playing them multiple multiple times about cracking them though cracking them could damage the box oh cracking the plastic oh, off fine. come on now <laughs> so anyways if you see any of these games that you would like to see us like review and talk about um drop a comment let us know we're happy to bump that up on our priority list because we're going to go based on what we want to do first mm -hmm. But if you guys want to see something specific, let us know and we'll get it to the table sooner and reviewed sooner so that you guys can be informed. Oh, yeah. audience participation. There you go. Yeah, I think that's it. The Rex is waving by. <laughs> With his little arms. <laughs> well, you guys have a great one and have fun gaming. Yes. <laughs> we'll catch you all later. See you later.